Welcome to this part of the course. In this module, we'll help you understand the concept of XST, or cross-site tracing attack. We found out in module 14 that XSS vulnerabilities could lead to serious damage. Session ID cookies theft, a usual target for these attacks, had become so common that a special mechanism has been introduced to prevent it. The HTTP-only parameter has been added to cookies, resulting in the sent cookie to be stored in a browser and transferred to HTTP requests but not accessed by JavaScript. This is served to neutralize many attacks. Let's now see how this mechanism works in practice. You can see here a simple PHP script which sets a cookie and the HTTP-only parameter we've just mentioned. It is initially set to false. We'll cover this part later. Let's now focus on the line which should display the content of a cookie set on the server side. Using the live HTTP headers add-on, we're able to see the communication between the browser and user. As you can see, the content of the cookie has been displayed. The contents of the requests includes the set cookie header with the name, value, and expiration date of the cookie. Let's change the HTTP only parameter to true. Clear the live HTTP headers logs and refresh the page. This time, the cookie has not been displayed and cannot be accessed by JavaScript. As you can see, the HTTP only parameter has been added to the end of the cookie definition. Virtually all web browsers support the HTTP only attribute. If it is set by the server, the browsers will block JavaScript access to the cookie which helps to minimize the fallout from XSS type attacks. This mechanism was initially believed to be an adequate security measure. A new technique has been developed which serves to circumvent it. This is called the XST, or cross-site tracing method. As we know, HTTP protocol enables sending requests of various types. The most popular among them are GET and POST requests. The HEAD request is also used to query a server for headers only. There are also other types of queries. For example, the TRACE request, which is implemented and enabled by default in most web servers. The query reflects user headers. All headers sent by a browser, including cookies, are returned as a server response. By using the XML HTTP request object, setting the request type to trace, and submitting the address of the attacked server, an attacker could read the contents of the cookies without using the document cookie variable. Instead, the attack exploits the data returned by text response, bypassing the HTTP-only mechanism. Let's see the site behavior again. As you can see, an error has been reported as a violation of security mechanisms. Many web browsers have lately begun to block less popular and rarely used request types, which could be utilized as a means for bypassing security mechanisms. Disabling trace requests could prevent an attacker from running XST attacks. This request is used mostly by developers to debug browsers and AJAX requests. However, its use in normal applications is so limited that it seems like a good idea to block it. 
While today XST attacks are nearly impossible to launch, it's still useful to keep in mind the possible attack scenarios and to block trace requests at the server level, either in firewall rules, configuration files, or HT access. That's all in this module. The next module will cover cross-site request forgery attacks. See you there.